Anybody watching on Facebook? All right, Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to start in verse 7. Everybody there? All right, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this opportunity once again to gather for fellowship and to hear the word this morning. Lord, and set your word in our hearts and in our minds, Lord, and open our hearts, open our ears to receive the message this morning, Lord. And, and I just pray that you just stay with me this entire time I'm up here and help me preach the message the way you want it preached, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said... And just want to say it is good to see you this morning, Pastor Lynn. Wasn't sure you were going to make it uh, with your with your back issue, but 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 uh, I think by the will of God you made it this morning. So so praise the Lord. He gets us through anything. So um, so this will kind of this will kind of be a reha uh, not a rehash, but it kind of follows along with what I preached a couple of weeks ago. Uh, when I was preaching out of 1 John, you know, love not the world and the things of the world, because if you do, you're, you're, you're not a friend of God. And this kind of this, this goes along with it. This is, uh, mostly Paul's, this is mostly Paul's view. And all through, you, you look through all his, uh, his writings, his letters, and you see this. And I'll, uh, I'll point this out. I'll point something out in a minute here. But right at the very first, right at the very first, he tells us to, to, to not be deceived, you know. And, and uh, you know, of course, deception has been around since the beginning of time, you know. And we, you know, we see it especially today. Uh, you see, uh, you see uh, special groups. You even see pastors. They, they, try, to, they try to convince you that uh, certain, ways, certain ways of doing things are okay. Uh, it's normal behavior even though it goes against the word of God. But you have people that try to convince you otherwise. They, they deceive you. And, uh, and when I was first, when I was gathering up my verses, my scriptures, for, for my message today, I, I didn't really uh, catch it at first, but uh, I know it was the Lord that helped me put these together because in three of my scriptures, deceived is prominent word in here, especially when I, when I go to 1 Corinthians uh, 6, and I start reading in verse 9, it says, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. He says it here again, be not deceived. And then he says, no, neither fornicators, nor idol idol idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And then he goes, and then further along in 1 Corinthians in, in chapter 15, verse 33, again he says, be not deceived, because evil communications corrupt good manners. So just in those three scriptures right there, you know, you see the theme, don't, don't be deceived. You know, as I said, you know, deception goes all the way back to the very beginning of time. You know, because, uh, you know, the serpent, the serpent deceived Eve. Told her, said, you're not going to die. Did God really say that? You know, you're not going to die. You eat that fruit, you'll be just like him. You'll be just like God. You know, pumped her up. Pumped her up with pride. Like, well, yeah, that, that sounds good. And we know what happened there. 
But Paul, you know, Paul warns about that in Ephesians. In Ephesians 5, verse 6, he says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And he also mentions in Ephesians, you know, the, the different, uh, you know, he mentions fornication and uncleanness and all, all the things, almost, almost a repeat of what, what I read in 1 Corinthians. You know, the pleasures of the flesh. You know, 1 John talked about uh, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And, this, and Paul echoes this. And sometimes uh, I feel that like people just, they have trouble grasping, grasping these, these scriptures. They, you know, they read it and they, you know, and they claim to understand it. And then, but then you see so-called Christians going out and doing the very things it warns against. You know, probably one of the most uh, prominent is fornication. You know, and fornication is basically, uh, it's, it's sex outside of the bonds of marriage. You know, even in the early times, you know, you had prostitution. You know, they say it's one of the oldest vices in the world because it goes all the way back to the Old Testament. You know, you had prostitution. You know, you even had uh, some of the pagan gods had temple prostitutes appealing to the, the carnal mind of man. Now, I've heard... I'd heard stories growing up, you know, when, uh, when, a teenager, when a teenage boy would reach the age of 16, you know, his dad, his dad might take him to a house of ill repute, you know, to uh, uh, make him a man. You know, that was how, you know, that's how you became a man, you know, in, in, some, uh, in some eyes. You know, you weren't a man until you did that. And, uh, you know, of course, premarital sex, Runs rampant, you know. Uh, can't remember what year it was. Had the summer of love. Uh, can't remember what year was that. Six, six, 1969 or late 60s. You know, they talked about the summer of love and you know free love and <coughs> all of that. And uh, you know, people, uh, you know, a man and woman, you know, they get together and. Um, they're they're living like a married couple, but they're but they're not married, you know. And and even churches will turn a blind eye to that sometimes. And uh, you'll see you'll see unmarried couples on the platform or uh, uh, engaging in activities with the church. Uh, you know, they might be on the board or doing this or doing that, and uh, just totally ignoring what the Word of God says. And then it reads, it, it mentions effeminate, you know, and first thing that came to mind when I was reading effeminate was the, the LGBTQ agenda that's, that's running rampant in our, in our nation uh, today. And, you know, they really, they really push that and try to shove it down our throats. And again, uh, so-called Christians are on board with this, you know, they... Uh, I've told the story before of a young man who's now trying to be a young woman, and and I would read comments from uh, people I know, people who are in church, you know, and they you know, they love the Lord, claim to love the Lord, and live by His word, and they're just like, man, good for you, so proud of you, congratulations, you know, you're gonna do good, and I'm just, you know, and I would just I would just read these comments, I'm like. Really? Okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm getting, getting about that close to commenting on it. And of course, I know when I do, the mom will unfriend me and block me. But that's the risk you take sometimes when you stand up for Christ. You know, when you, you lead your child to Jesus, if they stray... That's their soul. You know, if, if, you know if, if Aaron falls off the good path, okay, that's Aaron's soul on the line. But if Chaz and Jennifer embrace his sin, encourage his sin, get on board with it, well, now both their souls are on the line. 
you have to think about eternity. You have to think eternally. Because things we do on earth affect where we spend eternity. And there was even, there was even I think it was a minister, he, uh, he posted a link to an article supposedly, you know, supposedly in the Word of God where it was supporting the, the homosexual and, you know, that agenda. And, and, and I was reading, I read the article, I read some of the verses. It's like, that, that's a case of misapplying, misapplying the Scripture, misinterpreting the Scripture. And, uh, well, my camera didn't like that topic. <laughs> So, <laughs> that's all right. So, and it's just, uh, well, there went that train of thought. <laughs> no, uh, he misapplied the scripture. You know, if you remember a while back, I talked about how the misses and the disses of scripture, how people misinterpret, misapply, and uh, misread, and... Uh, It's just such a shame that, that this happens. Talks about coveting, covetousness. You know, it's, uh, in, the, in the Ten Commandments, it tells you not to, not to covet your neighbor's wife, not to covet his, uh, his, his, uh, his oxen or his cattle or his, or his goods. You know, just don't, don't covet any of that, you know, because... Now, one, if you, if you covet your neighbor's wife, you know, then that's, you're bringing on thoughts of lust and, and, and sinful behavior. Uh, it says not to covet uh, his servant, you know, because usually someone that has a servant, if they have a maid or they have a butler, uh, whatever the case may be, that indicates, well they're, well, they're well off financially, you know. So then they, you know, they're like, wow, you know, I wish, wish I had a servant. I wish I had a maid and... Uh, you know, boy, it'd be great to have all those possessions that that, that uh, so and so has. You know, and uh, it just becomes a, it just it it fills your mind. You know, and you just you start thinking. You know, you start you don't focus on what you have. You know, you, you'd rather have what what they have instead of being thankful for the things that God has blessed you with. And the Lord has blessed us. You know, we as believers, we are blessed. You know, whether, whether we live in a mansion or just a simple home, we are, we are blessed. We should never... Now, you know, now someone... Uh, now, you know, like uh, someone... You know, I remember the mayor, the mayor when, I was, when I was at work, you know, the mayor drove up, brand new Corvette, you know, it was shiny, it was red, you know, and um, it was very, uh, well, it was, it was just, it was a beautiful car, you know, and I commented on it, told him, you know, hey, that's really nice, you know, and I looked at it, you know, and I admired it for a little bit, and it's like, okay, you know, I was, I, I, I admired the car, but I didn't obsess over it, it's like, man, wish I could afford a Corvette, you know. Well, isn't he, isn't he special, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can look, you can look at someone's possessions, say, oh, yeah, man, that's, you know, that's, that's really nice. That's, that's good for you, you know, happy for you, and, you know, then you move on. You can't let it, you can't let it eat away at you. You know, James, James is, you know, pretty blunt, in his, in his book, in uh, James 4, you know, he tells us that, you know, if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. You know, there's no, there's no middle ground. There's no gray area. You're either, you're either with God or you're not with him. You can't, you can't be in love with the world and, then, and try to serve God. You know, that's, that's, where, we, that's where we mock him when we, when we try to live both lives. You know, we try to, you know, we may, you know, we say that, yeah, I love you, Lord, and we sing Amazing Grace, and then, and then we go and, you know, listen to things and watch things that we shouldn't watch and listen to. I, uh, yeah, it ain't going to work. Never mind. So, I was in my truck one day, 
listening to the radio, and uh, most of the time I keep it on in light, and it's a southern gospel station. And for whatever reason, I decided to switch it. I switched it to a, to a secular station. And this song comes on that I, that I really loved from the 80s, and, and uh, I, was, I was jamming to it for about 10 seconds, and then it's like, it's almost like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me through the radio, like, really? And it's like, yeah, I don't need to be listening to this, so I'll put it back on Enlighten. You know, it's like, I'm sorry, forgive me. I had a, had a mental lapse, you know. And, and, and I've mentioned this before, I may have mentioned it two weeks ago, you know, when, when it comes to music, we have to use discernment. You know, we need to pray for discernment every day. You know, because there are, you know, not, not all secular music is really, it's not bad or satanic in its, in its right. Um, you know, some are just old-fashioned love songs, you know. Uh, or, you know, they're just uh, stories that uh, the songwriter tells. You know, I used to, I used to love uh, Harry Chapin. Uh, great, great uh, songwriter, storyteller, um, stuff like that. And, and then there are other songs, other things, you, you, you know, as soon as you listen to it, you know, woo, don't need to be listening to that. <laughs> uh, you know, last month they, uh, was the Super Bowl. You know, that's the, of course, that's the big thing, you know, the AFC and the NFC, you know, they meet uh, for the chance to be the champion of the NFL, and uh, I'm not going to go into the halftime show. Uh, you've probably, I'm sure you've read about it, you know, you know how depraved it was. And uh, I, was speaking, I was speaking with a, uh, I took mom to get her uh, hair done shortly after that, a few days after that, and the hairdresser was saying, so what would you think? What would you think of the Super Bowl? What would you think of the uh, halftime performance? It's like, I, I didn't watch it. She's like, oh. She goes, well, did you watch the game? I'm like, no, didn't watch any of it. You know, I really haven't watched the NFL in about two years. Uh, just don't, just don't really care to. So, uh, you know, but you know, it seems like, well, not not just in the music world, but but on TV uh, and in in social media and uh, in the movies. Anything goes. You know, not, nothing is sacred anymore. Um, people just, you know, morals just seem to be slipping away, you know. There are no more, you would think that there are no more morals if you, if you watch enough, if you watch TV long enough or if you listen to the radio, if you listen to secular radio long enough. Uh, musical artists, uh, some of, they don't, they don't, Use they don't use uh, other words to convey their meaning anymore. Used to you could you could you could listen to a song and you could read between the lines. Okay, well they're really talking about this, you know. But at least, at least they were clean about it, you know. But now it's just they just come right out, you know. They call women degrading names and they 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 tell you right there on the record what they want to do. Very graphic, very obscene, and, uh, and this is this is. This crosses genres, you know. It's not just it's not just rap, you know. It's you know it's rock and roll, and uh, and even country and western. You know, it always amazed me. Nobody ever said, you know, you, you never hear people talking about country and western. But country and western has it has bad themes too, just just like rock and roll, just like rap does. They may they may sing it a little bit better, and maybe it's a little more pleasing, maybe it's a more pleasing tone when they play it. But not all of it is uh, pure and godly. There was one. Uh, there was one group. They were. They had a concert one particular evening, and, uh, and a, a contemporary Christian artist showed up at the concert, and they invited him on stage, and he played one of his hits. You know, so so all of a sudden, that entire concert was a praise was a praise and worship was a praise and worship set. Uh, no, it wasn't, because all the songs you sang before that did not give praise to God. And it's just, uh, and as I said, this is, this is common, and not just in music. It's common on TV, you know, and, you know, I remember as a kid, and I know Darlene remembers as a kid, you know, the, the, the shows we watched were uh, decent, very decent. Uh, you didn't hear any kind of swear words. Um, 
a lot of times, you know, a married couple on a TV show, they, they were sleeping in separate beds, you know. They were, they were fully clothed, you know. I mean, they had on pajamas, you know, you know, full pajamas, sleeping in a separate bed. You know, there was no indication, even though they were married, no indication of, you know, being in the same bed together. And um, um, even uh, I remember I Dream of Jeannie had to keep her belly button covered. You know, don't, don't expose that belly button because that's obscene. You know, they, uh, they censored Elvis in the early days. They only shot him from the waist up. They didn't like the way, they didn't like the way he shook his hips, and I can't even do it. <laughs> so I'm not going to try. But they, you know, they, the censors were very strict back then. And then, then through the years, through the decades, it just kind of started relaxing a little bit. Well, we'll, we'll allow this. We'll, we'll allow these words to be said. And, uh, okay, you can show your belly button now. You can you can show you know you can show this much leg, and, and then all of a sudden you can, you can show this you can show this much leg, and you can show this much leg, and uh, you can sh you know you, your your neckline, but your neckline has to stay up here. Well, okay, now your neckline can show here. You know, this the neckline kept plunging, the hemline kept raising, uh, the words kept getting a little more obscene, and. Uh, you know, used to certain swear words you would only hear on cable channels, but now there seems to be uh, certain channels on regular cable. You know, you hear, you hear every swear word. And I mean every swear word. I, uh, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've looked at clips on uh, YouTube before. You know, a show looks it looks it looks good on the surface. You know, it's like okay, this this might be a good series to check out. And you know, two minutes into it, it's like, whoa! He said what? So I was like, okay, I won't be watching that show. Won't be watching that show. Won't be watching that show. I watched I watched a, I watched a lineup coming up for the fall. I can't remember what may have been for Fox. Watching their fall lineup, and I'm like, nope, nope, okay. I'm not watching Fox this fall, you know. And it's come to the point where you can't hardly, it's hard to watch television. Um, maybe there are some good shows out there, I just, I just haven't found them. Um, you know, um, every now and then I'll watch Hallmark. <laughs> Especially if I'm at mom's house, that's her favorite channel. And at least Hallmark is decent. You don't, you don't, they don't have the swear words, and and they don't, they don't kiss till the very end of the movie. You know, they 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 only kiss once, and it's a oh, movie, movie must be almost over. You know, when they kiss, you know that's the end, and they live happily ever after. You know, so it's uh, maybe it's a little, uh, maybe it's a little unrealistic sometimes, but at least, at least there are still some movies and. Uh, TV like that. It just seems to be uh, fewer and fewer as we go along. But we have to, we as Christians, we have to keep our minds focused on the Word of God and what it says. We, and as, as James said, we can't just be hearers of the Word. We have to be doers of the Word. We have to, we have to put our minds on on God's kingdom, God's righteousness. We can't, we can't say to ourselves that I'm righteous. Our righteousness is filthy rags. We can't be righteous enough. We can't be good enough. Jesus told, told, them, told the rich man that there, there are none good except God the Father. None of, us, none of us on earth are good enough. None of us are righteous enough. The only, the only reason we'll make heaven is because of God's grace, because of what Jesus did at Calvary. We have, to, we have to stay within the shadow of the cross. Our faith has to be in Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. Our faith has to be in him and him alone, not in, not in Buddha, not in uh, Hare Krishna, uh, not, in these, not in these false religions that are, you know, Running, running wild. It has to be. We have to stay rooted in the Word of God and stay rooted in Christ. You know, Paul. Paul says in Romans, in Romans eight, 
In verse 6, it says, to be carnally minded is death. Doesn't get any plainer than that. If you're carnally minded, you're spiritually dead. And you're, you're going to face eternal destruction. You're going to face eternal punishment. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Remember what James said, friendship with the world is enmity with God. And here Paul says, the carnal mind. You know, if you're carnally minded, if, you, if, you're, if your love is with the world, it's enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're in the flesh, you cannot please God. But as it says in 1 John, when you, when you put your trust and you put your faith in God, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you can overcome the world. You can overcome all the lusts of the world, all the, all the temporal pleasures that the world offers. You can, de you can defeat the, the prince of this world, who is Satan, the great deceiver, the father of lies. We can't do it on our own. On our own strength, we can't do it. But with Jesus, we have the strength to do it. Um, John, I'll try to remember the story here. And it's, it's fiction, but it, but it makes the point about a man who um, had a visit from Jesus, you know, and, and Jesus wanted to stay with the young man, you know, and he says, yes, okay, well, you can... You can have this, this room upstairs at the end of the hall, you know, it's like, and Jesus being gracious says, okay, sure, I'll take it. And right at dawn, there was a loud knock at the door. The young man goes to open the door, and it's Satan. And Satan's trying to, you know, tempting him with all the desires of the world and trying to make his way in the house, and, and the man struggles with him, you know, and it takes takes a long time, and just the man's exhausted, but finally he gets, gets him out, you know, closes the door, and, and goes on. You know, and Jesus watches all this, you know, says, well, you know, you gave me one room. The guy goes, well, I'll tell you what, take the whole upstairs. You can have all the upstairs, you know. Okay. So the second, second morning, Satan comes back, and again, so it's a big struggle, you know, and the guy's, the guy's at his wit's end. He's at his wit's end, you know, and so at this time, Jesus tells him, says, look, why don't, you, why don't you give me the house, and you can stay with me? So the man's desperate. He goes, yes, you, you can have the house, and I'll stay with you. Okay, that, that, I'll do that. So then the next morning before the sun even comes up, there's that knock again, that loud knocking at the door. So the young man gets up, but then he hears footsteps. Jesus gets up too, because, oh, yes, I gave the house to Jesus, so now it's his responsibility to go to the door, to answer the door. So he's, so he's watching from a distance. And when Jesus opens the door, sure enough, it's Satan and when Satan sees Jesus at the door, he falls to his knees and bows down very low. He says, I'm sorry, my Lord, I'm at the wrong house. So when you give it to Jesus, give it to Jesus, he will protect you. He will, he will, he will fight for you. So don't be deceived. Don't, don't be deceived by the, by the pomp and the, 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 the frills that the world offers. Don't, don't, don't be deceived by the vain words. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in his word. Stay rooted in his word. And we'll overcome the world. Amen. All right.